yeah, so um, talking healthy planet. I gave myself a name recently, the regenerative vet, because I'm trying to, you know, it's all about regeneration. Um, healthy planet, so I'm trying to connect the dots between healthy planet, which we do have a problem with. You know, we have, a, um, we have climate change, we have ocean destruction, we have got plastics, we have got pesticides, we have got, we made a mess as humans, you know, with our brilliant minds, we have gone a little bit too far. Um, so I try to understand what's happening. Um, this is me in front of my house, you know, like, so I, I am a vet by far, you know, that's my first job is a vet and I fix animals all day, every day and have done so for over 31 years. So I, I do pull calves, I do, you know, I spend a lot of time outside, you know, bull testing, pregnancy testing, and then I go into the clinic and do small animal stuff. And I've got a team, we are only women, which is interesting, you know, it's 10 of us. And uh, lots of community work, you know, with that. So in my years, you know, being in Australia, I have, you know, I've lived on a property and I was married, had three children, we were breeding bulls and then didn't work out with husband. And me from a German, background, suddenly I'm in the Australian countryside by myself with three kids, with a lot of debt and, um, and my, you know, last thing that my husband did before he went was to castrate all the bulls. So there were no bulls anymore. And I just thought, oh, you know, like I was always very green, you know, so let's just convert it to organic. And while I was not a good farmer, I didn't have time, I didn't have resources, you know, like I learned about farming and soil and planet. So it was a real journey. So I come from that town called Gelsenkirchen and it's a town of thousand fires. So it's actually coal mining. It's as industrial on the planet as you can get. And I did never like being there, but you know, like having a distaste for something makes you get a taste for something else, you know? So I was always in love with country and farming and green things and that just speaks to me. And I think it speaks to every human. And um, so, but that's where I come from, you know, and that's what I wanted to get away from. Second from the left is my mum and my dad. And she started with her siblings and she started me off on a journey when I was at uni and she had breast cancer. And she looked at why did I get sick? Why did I get cancer? And so she found a guy called Dr. Brooker who said, whole foods, you know, you gotta have whole foods, you know, so the whole grain, which none of us gets, you know, from healthy soils. I didn't know anything about that then, you know, whole fats, you know, do butter, do cream, you know, and so he was right early in that game, you know, probably in the, uh, let's say in the 80s, maybe even in the 70s in Germany. And I followed that and I've done followed nutrition all the way along. So loved animals, loved science, went to, this is my old uni and, um, you know, like the, the cattle are in there, it's in Hanover in Germany. Uh, the horses are in there. It was just like a little village. It was fantastic, you know, and I learned normal medicine. Then I adventured out to Devon. This is my little town where I lived. Totnes was beautiful. And there was my little vet clinic where I, you know, where I learned the ropes. And still normal medicine, you know, just did what everybody else does. Met a cowboy, you know, Nick, and came to Australia. And this is my farm, which I only just sold, sadly. Had to let it go, but these are the old, you know, this is Gowry and um, that's where I ended up for the last 24 years. So we're breeding cattle. It's not one of our bulls, but um, you know, right, nice deep Angus. And so I thought it was all about genetics. And then, you know, like as during the years, suddenly it was all about the grasses that we grow. And I had a monoculture of love grass, you know, so that wasn't any good, but that was probably a consequence to father-in-law having supered and round up a lot which ended when I was there, ended me up with a whole property of really deteriorated granite and love grass. Um, and then when I went organic, just more through not doing anything, you know, um, but I learned about the soil. And then I learned about the holistic management, which you probably all are aware of, rotational grazing, soil, carbon. And so the dots started to somewhere form in my head. And then we hit droughts and then we hit floods and then we hit fires. And then climate change became more of an issue, which in, as you know, in rural Australia, a lot of conservative people 
followed that it's actually not happening. You know, I think it definitely has got something to do with carbon. It's not the only one. You know, it's nitrous oxide. It's, but generally speaking, humans have not treated this planet wisely or kindly. You know, we have very much done a lot of damage. And the smart thing for us to do would be to realize this and then to do something about it. So the, um, the path led me then to find the microbes eventually, you know, and Dr. Elaine Ingham, you know, like she's like the superhero. <laughs> and yeah, we, we know microbes. As a vet, I know microbes, microbes in the rumen, you know, they're the only life form that actually digests cellulose in all ruminants, in the hindgut of horses. You know, you give a cow or a horse antibiotics or goat or an antelope, they will actually starve to death. And I've had a bull recently, a show bull, and I looked at him, Hereford, you know, and he was on a property where they would prepare him for sale. And I thought, why bother with this one? You know, like it had little body, big head, completely starving. So I thought that's, you know, like, why is he even here? He shouldn't even be here, you know? So, but I said, let's do it my way. Gave him some microbes, some EM, you know, effective microbes, anaerobes, and that bull within a week had put on 50 or 100 kilos, you know? So the power of microbes is very much, you know, in the rumen, you know, necessary for life to grow. But I still hadn't really cottoned on to what microbes, what else they do, you know? So we knew about, about that. And in a horse, in the hindgut, it ferments, it keeps them warm in winter. You know, I always feel sorry for them when I see them standing on a paddock, you know, but they actually have got their own heating system. They're fermenting inside them. So that's what keeps them warm. And that the microbes are the ones that break down the cellulose for the horse or the cow or the antelope or the elephant or the koala actually to live, you know, and break it down into its glucose molecules and then, you know, to build up their own body about it. So horses are very inefficient. Anybody that's got a horse knows that you put the money in at the front and they shit it out at the end, yeah? because it's in the hindgut, it's very far down the track. While a cow is much smarter, cow poo is very digested, you know, very little and very sloppy. So they do this in the rumen and then they put that into the gut where it can be absorbed, yeah? While a horse does it the back way, little stomach, bit of small intestine, and then in the hindgut they're fermenting, you know, which is huge and they get colic and, you know, um, so they have to eat a lot, but it's got its place, you know, they're beautiful, love them, you know, and they've got their place on like everybody else in the ecosystem. So going through the droughts and floods, I got really freaked out about climate change, you know, and I honestly was sitting at home crying, you know, like the fires, you know, where it was, I would go to my farm, the farmers that I had, you know, they would be in my clinic crying, like shooting the cattle, you remember, don't have to go in about it, you know, much about it. And then at the same time, you see the, politic the politicians like um, Scott Morrison or Putin just giving another death step, you know, to planet Earth, you know. And I was really desperate. I thought, we are not going to do this, you know. Like, we, with all my knowledge, my biological knowledge, you know, I think, oh, my God, you know, like, we... And it made me really sad, you know. So sad to see everything die that, you know, like everybody that we just all need and love so much. So then my medical side... Um, People were getting sicker and animals were getting sicker in the clinic. And that's when I really started looking, what is happening here? You know, what? And I still hadn't, I've been on the whole food thing, you know, like we need whole foods, let's not break them down. But I hadn't really got to the bottom of it. So I've done my whole, you know, this is my flour mill that I've had for 35 years, you know, so everything that I feed my kids or myself is whole organic wheat, top, you know, put in the top comes out as flour pancakes, you know, so I make my own bread. And so that's done really well for my family. You know, my three kids are really healthy. They have got no allergies and I've fed them organic all their life. So the power of how we grow food for our health, but also for planet, you know, all came, you know, the dots started to connect. So this is paddock next door in the drought, you know, all so that's not, talking about climate change, that's not absorbing carbon, it's emitting carbon. The organic matter is probably down to below 1%. You know, it's very dead concrete like soil. So a few stories about, um, 
few stories about the power of food. Yeah, so this was a Clydesdale stallion, um, uh, a couple in town, and he comes and says, can't get him to actually serve a mare. And um, I said, oh, that's strange, you know, like three-year-old stallion, he should be keen as. No, and he said, oh, he's like my baby, you know, we get on so well, it was a gay couple get on so well, you know, and, and I, but I really would like to, him to make some babies, you know, so I thought, all right, you know, like, what do you feed him? He fed him soy, maxi soy, it's really popular in the horse population. Soy is really high in estrogen. He was estrogened out, he was like a girl, right? So I said, take him off that, you know, and he took him off it, and within a week, he actually had to get rid of him, because, you know, he's, you know, <laughs> Oh, it started happening, you know, so, uh, yeah, incredible, you know, so be aware of soy, you know, apart from that soy is really grown in an industrialized uh, exponential fashion, you know, like soy is um, very powerful. So then I sort of saw the clients, you know, like the things that come through my door and um, little dog, puppies, three weeks post birth and that in the, on the left there says, Arnold forgot to remind you to buy more vitamin mineral supplements, so they're lying there, nearly dying. So yes, you know, why, what's happening there with the minerals and the vitamins in our health? So calcium deficiency is a really good example of what happens when we take one thing out of our bodies. Like, let's take calcium out. In this case, it's, there's plenty of calcium normally everywhere, but this is just an example. You take one screw out of your car, it will not work. You know, one little thing out of your computer, it will not work. One mineral out of a body, and it will not work. So calcium, milk fever in cattle as well. Um, you know, you, you know, the puppies have drawn all the calcium out, and the dog will come in with a temperature of 41 degrees. It'll puff and pant, it'll run around, then it will collapse, and eventually it would die if it doesn't uh, get over it. Or if it doesn't come to a vet, you know, and we inject calcium, 20 minutes later, the dog will walk out. Yeah, so wow, yeah, and at, in that time, would we start talking about this dog's childhood and that the mother was a bitch? No, you know, because at that time, that dog just needs calcium, right? You give it calcium and it'll walk out sane, while before it was off its head. Yeah, so I think that's a really good example of what's happening in population nowadays, right? There's things missing, and we now start to understand why they're missing, and then we cannot expect our biology, our mind and our body to be sane and functioning and thriving and energetic and joyful. Um, that is a B vitamin missing. Yeah, this is farmers about, uh, amongst you will maybe know this, you know, CCN, cerebral, cortical, the cortex, necrosis, yeah, so, Acute vitamin B1 deficiency, when the bacteria in the gut alter, they don't make B1, or they break it down, and you have got an acute methylation problem in your brain. It gets literally mushy and liquid, yeah? Cerebral cortical necrosis, or P it's another word is PEM, polioencephalomalacia. So they will die, cattle do it, sheep do it, and the methylation, the glucose metabolism in the brain stops and they die very quickly. And we, if we come close enough, you know, fast enough, we can give them vitamin B1 and save them, but often the brain is just already liquid. So that is one vitamin of many that's missing. So Peggy was a dog that was really aggressive. And the people absolutely love their dogs, you know, but what, Peggy was killing the other dog, try to, and she said, I don't know what to do, you know, maybe I have to put it down. So I said, okay, let's try my way. Um, give it tryptophan, give it magnesium, give it zinc. Take it off all commercial dog food, take it off all gluten, of all grains, meat, fat, coconut oil, magnesium, tryptophan, supplement, probiotics. And a week later, this lady came back and said, problem solved. You know, fine. And I see this in the clinic. So what's happening? You know, like how many people have got some form of mental disease and they might just have something missing, right? We see hundreds of allergies and treatment gets more and more expensive, you know, from the five cent prednisolone tablet that worked quite well, but was still a cortisone to $140 a month cytopoint immune modulation 
you know, which is what we as vets do normally without asking why. So we see a lot of ear cases, chronic ear inflammation, allergies, extrapolate that to people, psoriasis, what's happening there, right? I have had dogs that run over paddocks and die overnight of complete kidney failure. I've had a client of mine that opened something in her shed, you know, of um, some agrochemical and went into multi-organ failure. So these are just all the questions that I got confronted with, right? Then my farmers. This is one Charlie three years old brain tumor. That was my friend's child. And they bought part of my property, you know, she was my vet nurse and Charlie died before, you know, they were always on the land and, you know, he had a brain tumor within a month he was dead. Then the husband got um, chronic fatigue while he was working on the farms, you know, cotton farming. And now he has got non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, Elizabeth, our riding school teacher's um, daughter, 11 months old, leukemia. She had about 100 and something um, chemotherapies. Another girl in town, she's 11 years old, you know, with leukemia. Um, Joe, one of really great horsemen, you know, cattle camp drafter, horse breeder, quarter horse guy, Parkinson's. Mary in the lung grass, spraying, you know, spraying business, breast cancer, two kids dead. Now her husband has got cancer. Um, lady that I met, she had five sh children in Bandara. Three of them are autistic. It, these are the people that I meet, but it reflects itself in the whole population, you know, that I get clients all the time and I hear all these stories. Christina has got obesity and diabetes at 35. Mark has got diabetes at 40. Um, Tanya, she told me the other day, she's 40 years old, she's got diabetes and high blood pressure. Angela, fatigue and neurodegenerative disease at 38, you know, and so forth. Lots of young women have got endometriosis, polycystic ovaries, fibromyalgia, thyroid. You know, it's, it's, um, it's a wave of diseases. So this is a neighbor farm. Somebody sent me this picture, you know, they shouldn't know that I have got this, but this is what's happening, you know, like this is industrial farming. So, um, oh, that was on my property on the drought. You know, this koala came down and was just sitting there holding our hand for an hour. He was so, it's got, never seen anything like it. So what's happening, you know? Um, I like this one. We should never underestimate human stupidity, both on the personal, on the collective level, humans are prone to engage in self-destructive activities. You know, we really, we really do, you know? So after I, when I joined the dots, you know, of soil, microbiome, nutrient deficiencies, chemical overload, diseases, um, insect death, 75% of insects are gone in Germany. Uh, the ocean dead zones, the fish kill in the Mendy, I always come back to why. Let's back, go back to the microbes. Down on the bottom here, this is where life started. You know, we had cyanobacteria, the first life forms on Earth. 13 million years ago, 13 billion years ago, no, 13 billion years ago, Big Bang, three billion years ago, life started. And the first thing that started were the bacteria, which we have ignored, yeah? So the bacteria then have developed into multicellular, then finally, you know, all the evol evolutionary ladder of what we have now today. But it started with, with bacteria, which are now in the soil, yeah? So this is just, you know, a very busy picture don't look at the detail, it's just busy in the soil. You know, so we should have microbes, we should have fungi, we should have protozoa. You're farmers, you know about all of those. So what do they actually do? They A, make the bacteria and the fungi make minerals available. So take them out of the equation, they will not make the minerals available anymore. I'm not going into detail, you know, how to detail do this and how to not, five minutes, yeah, how to, how to work our farming system differently, we must. How, not gonna go into this, it's an, it'll be an art form, it'll be long learning, but you know, looking at why do we grow food? To nourish, for people to eat, yeah? And, and this is where I see myself. There's medicine treating symptoms, there's farming creating food. These two never come together, 
yeah, but without, they don't even, doctors don't even learn about nutrition, yeah, but yet everything comes from food, you know, 100% from food, which is what farmers do. So that's, we, we do have a problem. Bacteria make minerals available, you know, all these magnesiums that you need. Each one, take the calcium out, you've got the dog with milk fever. Take zinc out, you've got little piglets that don't grow. You know, you have got prostate or tears or pink eye, molybdenum, you know, that's necessary for, you know, it's only micro uh, mineral, but we need it. You know, iron, hemoglobin, copper, hair, and so forth. You know, each one of them is necessary. Where do we get them from? They have to come from soil. They can't come from anywhere else. Yeah, these are building blocks of your body. Everything comes from air, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, you know, carbohydrates and fats. But as soon as you go into proteins, they need nitrogen. It has to come from the soil, from the air, but then in the soil. When you talk about iron for your hemoglobin, um, magnesium for your bones, you know, magnesium for your blood pressure, it has to come from soil. Yeah, so the bacteria making them, you take them out, you will not have minerals available. They are locked up. You've heard that in farming, yeah? They are locked up in the ground. And I take this on already now, it, a lot of the time chelated by Roundup. Yeah, glyphosate chelates minerals, doesn't let them go, but you also need the minerals to bacteria to make the minerals available. They make all B vitamins. I went down the rabbit holes. The B vitamins not come from anywhere else than from bacteria. And when you swallow a Barocca, or you drink a Barocca, it's made probably in China or India by bacterial fermentation. So they've taken these bacteria and make that, often genetically modified, which is another problem. Yeah, but nobody else makes them. You know, when you think you eat a plant or an, a piece of meat to get your B vitamins, yes, that's how you get it. But who made them in the first place? I went down rabbit holes, each one of them. And guess what? It's only the microbes that make them. You know, remember that first bit in, in our evolutionary history were the microbes. And it turns out that they make everything. They make all the vitamins and not only, you know, so take B1 out, cerebral cortical necrosis, B3, you can cure schizophrenia with it, B12, you know, you need it for so many different things in cattle, you need it for the whole metabolism. Next thing they make is amino acids. So 20, this is chasing nitrogen, you know, the nitrogen every farmer wants, we won't go into that, but nine, eight or nine of them are essential. You can't get them, you can't make them. The others you can make, but nine of them, these are your building blocks for protein, for your muscle, your blood vessels, your brain, your hormones. Eight of them we can't make, who makes them? The microbes. Yeah, you might eat something that has got tryptophan in it, like turkey or meat, but the cow didn't make it, and the turkey didn't meet it, make it, and the pig didn't make it. The bacteria in the soil made it. And they go into the plants. And I think when you read up, you know, that a lot of plants seem to make things, I think in future we will actually discover that the microbes from the soil will go up and down you know, the waterways in the plants and do their little magic there. Your mitochondria are ancient bacteria. So everything is microbes. So without, take the microbes out, Roundup kills them, yeah? Take them out and you will be deficient. We should have five milligrams of B1, for example, in our body, uh, you know, intake daily, and most people are on one. So we are all bordering on several cordial necrosis, you know? So we are so deficient and it shows everywhere. Once you get sensitized to it, you know, you can see those things everywhere. Bacteria fix nitrogen in the ground, so it's 78% in the air. So for farmers to, to use that rather than to buy urea, which suddenly jumps from $300 a ton to $1,300 a ton, we probably have to use these again. Otherwise, China has got you. Yeah, where does urea come from? It's made, a lot of it is made in China. You know, they just put the price up and all fertility of your farming in Australia can fall to the ground. So we must revive these, yeah? They make, the bacteria make polyphenols and alkaloids. What makes your 
things colorful, you know, anti-high blood pressure, anti-parasites, anti this, anti that, you know, for this, for that. This is what makes it tasty, colorful, brilliant. Food as medicine, that's where it is. There's about 27,000 compounds that we have no idea about. You know, so food is more than fat, carbohydrate, and protein. Fungi are amazing. You haven't got time for them, and so are earthworms. So are our soils that make this, are the microbes alive? No, they're not, because modern farming kills it. And I live in a farming community. I like farmers. We couldn't live without them. You know, it's not about that. It's not about accusing anybody of having done something wrong. Nobody, I don't think, maybe Monsanto, not so sure, but most people would not go out to kill their soil. Or we haven't discovered plastics to really destroy the oceans, you know? It just happened. You know, we are so smart. We run with things. Oh, that's a good idea. And suddenly, we are waking up now because we have a huge problem. So nitrogen, NPK kills microbes, urea kills microbes, superphosphate kills microbes. Herbicides in particular, Roundup is an antibiotic, kills microbes. And so did the plow. So therefore, we have now mineral deficient plants in the food chain, mineral deficient animals, mineral deficient people. Glyphosate is an antibiotic. It kills the shikimate pathway. And the shikimate pathway is what we don't have. And that's why they said, look, 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 you can drink it. It doesn't matter. It does matter because it, the shikimate pathway is the pathway that makes your amino acids, for example, tryptophan. Yeah, so do you take that out of the food chain, out of the soil? They are not made anymore. It collates minerals. So even if you pour mineral fertilizer on, Roundup keeps it down there in the ground, not available. And Roundup builds itself in the spot where glycine is, which is really important. We probably haven't got time. Um, so microbes in the soil, but also in you. You know, like new research. Only 2011 did we find out that we have got a gut microbiome and what it does. And it does an awful lot. Everything is microbiome. You know, every day I learn more and I think, oh my God, you know, how could we miss that, you know? So we've ignored that in the soil making our nutrients and we're ignoring it in our gut, you know, making us happy make, and so forth. Reflected in population, you know, 75% of Americans have an incurable chronic disease and 40% of their kids. They cannot find people for their army anymore. You know, like this is not a little problem, it's a huge problem because we are running to one in two or one in three children with autism. How does society function then? We are running that every older woman is practically has got Alzheimer's and they can't find people for their army anymore. One last thing, this is really important, tryptophan, one of the amino acids. This is in your gut and that is what comes out of it, serotonin, yeah, your antidepressant. You need tryptophan coming from the bacteria. You need bacteria in your gut to transform it to serotonin to make you happy. Modern medicine gives you a serotonin uptake inhibitor to make that little bit that you might still have last a bit longer. We've got a huge problem with mental disease. 40%, 50% of farmers, 50% of school kids. Vitamin B3, you know, like made from this with bacteria. People cure schizophrenia with B3. IPA is a substance from this plus bacteria that protects you against better amyloid for Alzheimer's. We have got an Alzheimer avalanche happening. Um, melatonin, same pathway makes you sleep. Yeah, we've got also lots of insomnia. So it's really, really important. And this is just a little bit of it. And now I have to stop. That is phosphorus, that's, this is glyphosate, that's glycine. It's exactly the same, but this bit slides itself in where this little amino acid is and buggers up your system completely. And that's why it's so, so dangerous, hidden, hiddenly dangerous. One, this is, for example, testosterone coming from, the st uh, from cholesterol. You know, like cholesterol is really important, makes testosterone, take that little one carbon three hydrogen away makes you into a woman, that enzyme is destroyed by Roundup. You know, like you have 
confusion. You know, because that's your polycystic ovaries, haven't talked about leaky gut, haven't t talked about all of that, you know, but we, um, we made a mistake, that's my dog. <laughs> that's my son when he was little. So we are in a mess. And then I won't talk about how to fix it, but you know how to fix it is with regenerative agriculture, get the soils running and, you know, and then eat that food. We address climate change, we address oceans dying, you know, like everything is with regenerative agriculture, you know, like get the soils as a carbon drawdown, you know, this is where it's got to go. We can heal, you know, you can heal anything in your body. You can heal, heal multiple sclerosis, allergies, you know, so, so much. But we've got to go back to nature, how we have been designed to live.